Have you ever been on a road trip when it was really hot outside and your air conditioner wasn't quite working right? Was it miserable? What did you do to cope with it? Hi, I'm Benjamin Faust, and I'd love to go over with you what a Nash equilibrium is, an example of it, with a time element in it without using math. So here's the setup. We're gonna go on a long road trip in August in Texas, and we're gonna take my Toyota, which is old, and it's janky, and it has really slow air conditioning. So we all pile in the car, and it's really hot and I have the air conditioning on full blast, I have the recirculate on, and we're heading from Fort Worth to El Paso, we're on 20, going 80 miles an hour, and we're just starting to beat up with sweat, it's dripping down our face, we're getting highly uncomfortable, the air conditioner's not working properly, what are you gonna do? So you're gonna roll down the window, clever you, and did you fix your problem? Yes, because now you've got a little bit of breeze, if you just cracked it, you got a little bit of breeze coming in, if you went full throttle, you might be a little overwhelmed with the sound and how much force there is, because we are going 80 miles an hour, but you did solve the problem. But what did that do to the rest of the car? Remember, my air conditioner isn't broken, it's just not working very well. So it was producing some cold air, what is now happening to that cold air? It's going right out the window that you just opened. Plus, everybody else in the car has that weird ear imbalance going on because only one window is open, so soon other people start to crack their window and everybody's window comes down. Let's use this story to explain a Nash equilibrium. Okay, you're gonna start out with a what looks like a square with four squares inside it. If you've taken biology or genetics, you might recognize this as something similar to a Punnett square. We're gonna use something very similar in this microeconomics lesson. And on the sides, we're gonna put each player. So I have passenger here and driver here. Now normally in cars, we probably have four, maybe even five actual riders, but to simplify so we can do this game, it's just gonna be passenger and driver. And you'll notice here that I actually put the choices each player has. The driver can keep her window up or her window down. And the passenger can keep her window up or her window down. We good so far? And here we've added the player actions and the results they get from those actions. I have driver and passenger for all four of those squares. I've also added a time element, and that's not traditionally taught when you're introducing the concept of Nash Equilibrium, but in my microeconomics classes, I require it uh, for almost every one, so I'm adding it in now. And it brings our story, the one about the road trip, to full fruition as we go through this. So we have a now result and a later result for all four of these possible squares. Let's get started with the first choice, which is both the driver and the passenger both choose to leave their window up. Remember, and I did have an engineering student of mine tell me that this was not how it works in cars, but we have to kind of pretend. So my car is not a broken air conditioner, it's just slow. So if you wait 10, 20, 30 minutes, it starts to really fill the interior of the cabin of the car with air. We get fully comfortable after a period of uncomfortableness. And so if we both have our window up, for a long period of time, we're gonna end up okay, but at first we're gonna be hot and miserable. Remember, we're in Texas and it's August. So I'm gonna put some unhappy faces on the results for the now results, the now time results, for both the driver and the passenger to denote that. Again, I'm not using any numbers or math as promised. But as we switch to later, the air conditioning gets going, it starts to fill the cabin, we start to get relief from the heat, we're both gonna be better off in the long run for the later category. And so we get smiley faces to represent the good results in the later time portion for both the driver and the passenger. Let's go to the scenario where one of the players decides to go ahead and roll their window down while the other one doesn't. Let's say the passenger rolls her window down while the driver does not. What's that look like? So now we have a passenger happy, maybe not as happy as in the first scenario, the later category of the first scenario, but the passenger's a little bit better off because the window is down. The driver, however, is not better off and in fact is a little bit more uncomfortable because of that weird ear pressure thing we talked about and also the fact that any chance of the future of them getting better is gone because it's all going out the passenger's window, so they get kind of an angry face. Is the driver going to put up with that? Not really, and so we're actually not even gonna fill in the later time element because the later time element the driver is going to change her behavior she's actually gonna do what roll her own window down 
And so here I said there's no later time element because they actually don't stay on this square, they're gonna move to this square. Uh, denote that by an arrow and by X is saying we have no later category there. Now let's do the same scenario, but with the driver putting her window down first and the passenger leaving her window up. And as you see, it's just the opposite. We just change which player has which reaction for this square over here. You have the driver semi-happy because she's getting some relief from the heat and the passenger is not really happy at all, a little bit angry because it was happening. And in fact, there won't be a later solution for them because the passenger will change her behavior and push us down to here. Let's go ahead and fill in this last square. And so we filled out our fourth square, both the driver and passenger, since they both chose to roll their window down, are both going to be semi-happy, but not as happy as they would be up here in the later category of the first square. Uh, semi-happy, and in the long run, they're not as bad off as being unhappy, but they're a little bit uh about it, because for a long road trip from you know Fort Worth to El Paso, it might be 10 hours or so, uh, maybe even a little bit more, uh, they have to endure the loud roaring of the uh, of the errors that's going by and the disruption that causes and it may not be the best solution in fact it's not uh, for most people would say that's not the best solution for a long road trip now let's talk about this solution up here this probably we should regard as the optimal solution because you put up with a short-term pain for a long-term gain we're gonna call this the best solution just put up with 20 to 30 minutes of uncomfortableness and then it's gonna be cool for the rest of the trip that's probably the best choice these others do not give you as good of satisfaction. And so we found our optimal solution problem solved. Yes, not really. In this game, the passenger and the driver are both very, very impatient. And so either they cannot see the light of tomorrow or they're unable to wait 20 to 30 minutes for the air conditioner to get ready to go. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna collapse. It's unstable. We're gonna put it's unstable because people in this square will be like, oh, I'm so bad off. I don't really think about the future, but right now I'm so uncomfortable. All I need to do is crack my window. Oh, and then it causes this situation. Oh, it makes the other person unhappy. And then they roll their window down and we end up over here. Same thing if the other one does it just through this mode. And so when you're here, it's not stable because either player can kind of cheat, roll their window down, make themselves better off, and eventually, force the other player to roll their window down also. So I added three arrows here, one showing it could possibly go where the passenger goes ahead and rolls her window down, or the driver goes ahead and rolls her window down, or both the passenger and the driver, anticipating what the other is gonna do, just go ahead and immediately go here, both roll their window down. So again, this is an optimal solution, and I'm gonna write here, it is unstable. We've already talked about this, but the square here and the square here are also unstable because they're inherently going to push people to this final square down here. But they're also, are they optimal? Not for anybody, not for either player. So they're also suboptimal. I'm going to go ahead and write that in the squares. So there you have it. Both of them are suboptimal and unstable. Let's talk about this last square down here. That's a very special square in this particular game we're playing. How does that look? Is it optimal? No, it's terrible. We're a little bit happy at first, but in the long run, we're gonna get, you know, possibly even hearing damage from having so much wind go by us. Summer road trip movies aside, like it gets old after a while to have your hair like, you know, being blown back all the time. So here is definitely not the best solution. So we're gonna have to say it's suboptimal. But this last square provides us something that all the other squares do not provide. Yes, you're right, it is stability. It is the only stable solution in this particular game. So even though it's not the best solution, it does provide something good, which is the stability to have a Nash equilibrium. And by the way, this square is the Nash equilibrium. I put a star on it so we know it's the Nash equilibrium. This type of Nash equilibrium is related to the famous one called the prisoner's dilemma. And it's quite interesting because it requires, in this case, some kind of authority or joint decision or some time uh, of even coercion to get the best result. So in this case, an authority figure could come in and say, hey, you can't keep your windows down and we require 20 to 30 minutes. We borrowed the economics professor's car. It takes 20 to 30 minutes to actually fill with cold air. So if you have your window down, you're defeating it. You must leave it up. In this case, with two players, two riders in the car, two road trippers, you probably, it's the driver. The driver can say to the passenger, hey, I'm driving, so make sure you keep those windows up. It's gonna be miserable, but trust me, 20 to 30 minutes, according to my economics professor, it'll get better. Or, since they are the driver, uh, she could just 
put the child safety lock on and prevent the passenger from doing so, thus forcing the situation to be better. It requires some special force to push the solution from a stable suboptimal solution down here at the Nash equilibrium back up here to the optimal solution, uh, but again requiring some kind of outside force.